Hey Grace Church, Michael Campbell here in Paradise Pier. Wanted to go over the story that the kids are going through this weekend, how it applies to them, how it applies to us as teachers, as parents, guardians, primary disciple makers of the home specifically. And so this weekend we are going over Jesus talking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3 about eternal life. But just a reminder to memorize the Lord's Prayer. It's something that you might want to recite at home because in a lot of our classes that's something that we're either singing or uh, going over uh, week to week. But Light and darkness are contrasted throughout the scriptures, and in John chapter 3 specifically, Jesus explained to Nicodemus the hope and grace of God and the means by which he actually saves. And so consider what Jesus was saying as he emphasized the contrast in that conversation. So in John chapter 3, Jesus said, This is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and avoids it, so that... The deeds may not be exposed, but anyone who lives by the truth comes to the light so that his words may be shown to be accomplished by God. Jesus said that judgment is coming and honestly has arrived because people loved darkness more than they loved the light. Ultimately, Jesus was referring to himself, having entered into the world to have overcome the darkness. But as John 1 says, he was not recognized as the light, even by his own people, right? And so some 2,000 years later, the question is, do we too love darkness or have we truly received the light? How can we know? Jesus actually helps us answer that question. One might summarize Jesus' response this way, like, if you love darkness, your deeds will be evil. And if you love the light, your words will be obvious evidence of the the power of God and the evidence of whether we we love darkness or the light is found in in the way we live right like whatever we do or decide or how we talk so do you live in a way that expresses your love for light or for darkness is there a clear picture of the power of God in your decisions your actions your words do people see the work of God and hear of his power when they interact with you it's easy to answer these important questions with aspirations, but we can't convince God of what is not true, right? And even further, our aspirations mean nothing without a deep dependence on God's transformation for our lives. Though we find evidence of what we love and how we live, ultimately, God looks at the heart and our lives will be evidence for loving God above all else. And in our faithful pursuit of the light, the evidence will show for itself. And it's not the works and the behavior that saves us, but it is a proof and a response of that saving work of God so that we can live through the light. And again, these are some of the things that we're going through in our classes on Sundays and Wednesdays, but you'll notice on the rest of the, uh, the thread, some memory verses, discussion questions, and some topics to go over as a family. But until next time, God bless and take care.